Well, I guess to, to start with, let's just talk a little bit, Lori, about um, about yourself and where you're from and, and who you are. Well, um, I'm Lori Cole. I'm from, uh, I was born and raised in St. Martin, Manitoba, which is, everybody always goes, where is that? Everyone thinks <laughs> it's like the Hawaiian Islands. I'm like, no. <laughs> it's, um, it's in, uh, it's two and a half hours north of Winnipeg down the number six highway, a small little town near Gypsonville. They used to mine some gypsum out of there. And I was raised on a beef cattle ranch that my brother is Scott is still running today. Very nice. Farm girl like me. I grew up on a mixed farm, beef and crop. Yeah. Just outside me too. of Ipoan. So what was that like for you growing up on a farm? You know, what kind of perspective did that give you? Well, it certainly raises you I think it raises kids uh, pretty well rounded and um, down to earth. Um, you know, and, and it's it was a very laid back kind of lifestyle and when I come home I can see that, um, and I can feel that. You know, I'm sure when my brother's putting in a crop and he's got cows calving, it's stressful for him. But, you know, I, th I think it's a great way to raise your kids. And, you know, what do you think? Oh, I think it's a great. I, I loved it. I loved being one of the few people that had, like, acres and acres of land to go hang out in. Yeah. You know, when they were done school, you'd go home and you'd get out your quad or you'd get out your truck, or you go out to the pasture and do silly things like shoot gophers, that kind of stuff. Yeah, target <laughs> shoot. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's, it's stuff that a lot of town kids don't get a chance to do, so I really enjoyed my upbringing in a rural area. You and I knew where a cow came from. Yes. And how babies were born. Yes. <laughs> there are some that maybe don't. <laughs> it's true. So, so talk a little bit about how you got into music. It seems that a lot of folks that grow up on farms or in rural areas kind of naturally um, gravitate toward music, but how did you end up going that way? Well, no, it's funny that you should ask that because nobody in my family really sang, like nobody sat around with a guitar and, and, and sang beside a campfire or anything. Like my mom and my, my aunt Joanne, they had a little band. I found out later when they were growing up and, and my aunt, you know, she dreamed of going to the Calgary Stampede and performing there. Never did, you know, of course, back in the day, but, um, my musical roots comes from that side of the family, from my mom's side. And um, I just loved singing. When I was six years old, I had nothing to do and not a friend for like six miles. So I'd sing every kind of record that I could get my hands on. So talk about how you ended up with, with country music, because obviously there's an infinite number of possibilities when it comes to musical styles. How did you find country was your style and fit you best? Well, I, my mom listened to a lot of, like, um, Don Williams, Freddie Fender and stuff, and I still remember Wasted Days and Wasted Nights. You know, that was my favorite song to sing. Um, and then I listened to some pop, too, like on the radio station close to home. It was Dauphin, mm -hmm. um, CKDM. And, you know, they played a mix, and KY58 played a mix, too. So I got a lot of pop and rock influences then, too. But until I was in my teens, um, I started listening to Reba McIntyre, and I loved the way that she bent her voice, and just, it's like, it was like acrobats, you know, like she just could do anything, and so I started kind of copying her, and I started taking some singing lessons with Ray St. Germain in Winnipeg, and um, he put me on a stage, and it all kind of went from there, but... Yeah, country's my love. It seems like a lot of folks in Manitoba that are in the country music business have a tie to Ray St. Germain. His name comes up a lot. Does it? What kind of influence did he have on you? Well, Ray, um, Ray was a wealth of knowledge for me for, you know, proper breathing technique. And he gave me some really good tools to sing properly, not hurt my voice. Um, but, you know, Ray was just... Yeah, girl, you're good. You know, you need to sing live. Have you ever sang live? No, I, I sang in a choir in the Manitoba <laughs> Choral Association. And he said, well, you need to do it. And he said, next Thursday, I want you to come on out to the holiday and you're getting on a stage. And so with my knees knocking together, I got up and did it. And we sang and, and he did that for about two or three months for me. And I'll never forget that because, if it, you know, I'm sure I would have found my way, but he, he really gave me a boost. Talk a little bit about some of your other influences. You mentioned Reba McIntyre, which I think a lot of, of people in that, say, 20 to 40 range, especially female country singers, would label as one big influence. What I found interesting on your website is you mentioned Stevie Nicks. Mm -hmm. I thought that's really interesting for a country music singer to look at Stevie Nicks, who is even unique by, say, rock and roll female type standards. So talk about her and how she's influenced you. Well, again, um, you know, 
growing up listening to different styles of music, she just, again, had this really neat, raspy voice that I, that I could really relate to. And, and again, you know, I love what she could do with her voice and, and it was different and yeah, love it. So let's talk a little bit about uh, what you're doing these days. And mm -hmm. today you're traveling across Manitoba, speaking with folks like me. But let's talk about your album. Just talk a little bit about what you poured into that. Well, this this has been a long time coming. Um, I recorded this album in 2009, and the cuts that I recorded on it, um, I, I had a hard time choosing because I only did record four. And, um, you know, I wasn't going to go down and record a full album. And I wanted to write my songs. It was very important to be a writer on it. And of course, teaming up with the right people to do that and writing about um, issues and things that, that I wanted to talk about to my my crowd. Um, so yeah, I went down and, and I chose Steve Fox to be my producer and I love Steve. I loved uh, the first time I ever met him. He was you know, really engaging, um, not pretentious at all, very down to earth. And he cared about you know doing what I wanted to do, but also keeping it really, really um, creme de la creme, you know. So um, I wrote um, and recorded them down there on that same trip, and my first release to radio um, was was Happy. I co-wrote that song with Adam Wheeler, who's a writer down in Nashville, and um, that song's about divorce. I went through a divorce myself, and it seems like so many people are divorced, which is really sad. Um, but I wanted to kind of get a different angle and write an up-tempo kind of happy song about divorce and we called it happy. <laughs> <laughs> Which is interesting. <laughs> yeah. But you know what, it, 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 it's you, right? And I, I get the sense from you, you know, saying that writing your songs was important and obviously mm -hmm. that's why you wanted to make sure that that song reflected your own experience and you had the chance to write it. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, it did. You know, it's important. And, and I, I think that music touches people. I think music can change people's lives. It can make, you know, a, a person's day. Um, you know, you're having, you wake up, you're having a, a great day and maybe the glass is half empty that day instead of half full. And you can turn on the radio and listen to a song and that song can kind of change your mind sometimes about how you're going to, you know, spend the rest of your day feeling. So talk about Bare Feet and Butterflies. We're playing it here on Country 88. What's that song about and how did you kind of come up with it? You know, um, Bare Feet and Butterflies is a song. It was the first one I wrote um, with Steve when we went when I went down, and um, that song is very close to my heart. And I actually sang it this past weekend for my family, and uh, it was at my aunt's birthday party. And she said, "Why don't you tell us a story about that song?" And I ended up I could barely get through it because I was crying, but I wanted to capture um, just the feeling of going home. You know, you were raised in. Um, which town? Meepawa. Meepawa, yeah. sorry. No, that's okay. Beautiful town. And I was raised in my little town, and there's so many people that, you know, every summer I go home, I take my kids home, and I wanted to capture that feeling of going home. And every year, you know, I turn on the radio around off, and I can kind of hear a little bit of static on the radio that I'm familiar with, and grew up with one TV station and, and one radio station. And, um, you know, every year I go home, and somebody has passed away, and time goes on with us, but... Um, that song is really about going home. So what's next for you? We've got the album out. A couple of tracks have been released to radio. So what's mm -hmm. next this summer and, and maybe even beyond for the uh, rest of this year? Um, the rest of this year, um, I'm actually getting married in December. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. You can come if you want. It's in Mexico. <laughs> in Mexico? Yeah. Yeah, you won't have to convince me too hard. I okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so... Um, yeah, we're getting married, and uh, my guitar player, and actually my fiance, is, is um, I'm marrying him. <laughs> Good, well, that's great. And, uh, yeah, and we're really happy about that. So that's on our slate, and we're writing right now and teaming up with other writers. And uh, hopefully the, the first part of 2014, I'm going to get back down and do some more recording with Steve. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Good. Well, you know, that's actually... All the questions I had, Lori, and you did a fantastic job. Well, you're, you're, you're a good asker. <laughs> well, I try. I try to make people feel And you got a great tie. Did you Thank get you. this tie in there? I, uh, I actually picked this tie out myself. This uh, this wasn't, you know, with help of my wife. Okay. Which is shocking that any yeah. man anywhere could pick out a tie that matches his shirt. That's pretty good. <laughs>
Barry so, can't do that. <laughs> it was an acquired skill. I have to be honest. It took me like probably 15 years to finally figure out, oh, purple goes with purple. Yeah. <laughs> oh, not with neon orange. Oh, I get it. Okay. 